These pictures aren't Photoshop pictures of me. No one created them. They come from two artificial intelligence tools called Stable Diffusion and Dream Booth. Let me explain. Stable Diffusion is a machine learning tool that takes basically a noise pattern and uses a neural network to pull an image from the noise. It's pretty magical really and allows you to create some amazing shots. Dream Booth is another machine learning tool that takes in images of a person or even a, a whole art style and trains a model to recognize and recreate that person or style. Combining the two means that, well, you can put yourself into the stable diffusion images. But to make it clear, this isn't just like a, a fancy Photoshop. This isn't taking an actual image of me and morphing it into something else. This is a neural network that actively understands my face and can recreate it in any style or form I ask it to. In this video, I want to give you a rundown of how you can set this up on your own if you'd like and talk about my experience of playing around with this whole lot for the last week or so. This is very much what you would call bleeding edge tech. So anything that I show here will be out of date by sometime next week. So it's not worth going too deep into an exact how to, but here's a quick overview. Dream Booth in particular requires a whole lot of GPU power and especially VRAM or video memory. Because it's actively training the model instead of just running the inference, it's a rather memory and compute intensive process. That means that you'll need a beastly system like this one from CyberPower, complete with an RTX 1490. You can run this with different cloud services uh, if you are part of the 99% of people that don't have a 1490 on hand. Uh, and then you will need to install Python 3.10.6 and Git. You'll also want to clone the GitHub repo linked in the description from Automatic 1111. And you'll also need to download the Stable Diffusion model. It's linked in the Automatic 1111 dependencies page or uh, from Hugging Face, which you can then drop into the slash models slash Stable Diffusion folder. Uh, you want to use PowerShell to git clone the repo, change directory or CD into the new folder, and then run webui.bat, assuming you're on Windows anyway. Let it install everything, then you can start making some incredible images. That part doesn't need a 4090 or 24 gigs of VRAM, although it does help. For Dream Booth, once you have the Stable Diffusion web UI installed, head to the Extensions tab, load the available extensions, and then click Install on the Dream Booth extension. Assuming that it does manage to install okay and isn't broken when you try and use it, which very well could be the case, you can hit apply and restart, then head to the new Dream Booth tab. You'll want to use Stable Diffusion to generate a few hundred generic faces and then create a folder with as many pictures of your face as you can find or take. They'll need to be 512 by 512 and ideally the majority of that frame will be your face. Then paste the links to those folders into the setup, give it an instance prompt such as a photo of your name person, a class prompt which for this because we're training it to recognize a person as we're just going to put person, click the optimize for people button and then hit train. This might take a while, even on a 4090, and you can check the output directory for the sample images to see how the training is going. I had to train my models multiple times to the order of six to 10,000 steps to get a good result. But once it's done, you can hit the generate checkpoint button, hit refresh on the checkpoint list in the top left, and then use your prompt to have it recreate you. I've been playing with this, uh, both Stable Diffusion and a couple of Dream Booth models, and I want to talk a little bit about what this is and isn't good for. Obviously, this is a frankly amazing tool, but it definitely has its quirks. One of the really interesting things is that the canvas size is quite important for how the generation decides to work. If you leave it at the default 512 by 512, it generally does close up portrait shots. 
but if you set it to a wider aspect ratio, it will generally do wider, more landscape style shots. Set it to tall and narrow, and it will generally do more full body portraits. What's more amusing though, is that with anything other than a square, it generally draws multiple copies of the subject you're asking it for, often morphing them sort of into each other. That's thanks to the whole noise pattern thing, and the fact that it isn't actually aware of what it's drawing from the noise. It basically starts drawing in multiple places, and often gets sort of caught together and then tries to fix it up afterwards, but it means that you get multiple copies of, say, the same person, which can be quite funny and uh, a bit weird as well. There are a number of little quirks like that that you will find, and it can give you some really weird or often even some gruesome results. Even with the model of my face, depending on your settings, it can be pretty hard to get what you're looking for out of it. The settings can make a big difference to the result. For example, the CFG setting basically determines how accurate to the prompt the generated images need to be. The lower the number, the more creative it will be. The art there is in finding the balance between accurate to accuracy to the prompt and getting something that kind of looks like, in my case, me, and letting it be creative enough to match the style that I'm asking it for. If you can't get it to output anything near what you want though, especially if it's uh, something with your face in it for example, you can swap checkpoints back to the standard stable diffusion model and then create pretty much anything that you'd like from that. Then use the send to in paint button, uh, switch back to your checkpoints and paint out the face that it drew and ask it to generate your face instead. The denoise option isn't quite what it sounds like. It's actually how much it, the, the sort of generation should differ from what's under the masked area. If you set it to a high number, it will disregard the source image more, whereas a lower number means that it's going to stick a lot closer to the original and just do minor tweaks. The trick there is the more denoised it is, the less like the rest of the image it will look like which can make trying to swap your face into an existing image more difficult and can take multiple iterations and steps to get that even close to being right. One of the other really interesting features is the ability to give it a source image and have the AI automatically improve the design. Here is an absolutely terrible shot that I made in paint in like two minutes and with uh, just a couple of tweaks and an extra text prompt to go with it, Stable Diffusion spat out this. Seriously, how much better does that look? It's still clearly based on my paint masterpiece, but it's much, much better. Now, photorealism generally isn't this thing's strong suit. It's the more stylized the image you ask, you ask it for, the, the better it will look. Looking at the more photoreal images from a distance generally look fine, but on closer inspection, it reveals a whole number of flaws, and you can see that they're not quite human generated. Also, beware of errant hands. It both can't draw hands very well anyway, but also draws way, way too many of them. Seriously, it, it must be an epidemic at this point. But here's the thing. Despite what it seems, this is still very much a tool for artists. At least at the moment, it's almost impossible to get what I would call fully production ready shots straight out of this without needing some sort of tweaking in something like Photoshop after the fact. I can see it being really useful as a, a prompt for artists, and I'm sure that more talented people than me will be able to make the most of this tool as is, but a lot of skill goes into even just putting in the right prompt alone, let alone tweaking all of the settings and using the extra tools like in-painting. One of the, the, the risks with a tool like this is the ease of which someone can make use of someone else's style, characters, or designs. If I put in Simpsons, well, it gives me fully new pictures of Homer. Corridor Crew used an artist's style, and there are models for Studio Ghibli's art style, and plenty more, so it's not hard to imagine that going a little bit further. 
What's arguably more worrying though is the fact that with a tool like Dream Booth, you can train models of any one that you can get even a, a small handful of pictures of. Impersonations and deepfake style images are even easier than before, and that's kind of worrying. Depending on how you view it, the good or bad news is that this tech is only likely to improve. Training models will become less intensive and I'm sure that services will pop up to make doing that a lot more easy. You'll also get better image generation and more accurate generation over time too. The pre-trained models will get better, more content rich and more accurate, and the tools in general will slowly become easier to use. Whether or not that's a good thing, I'll leave it up to you, but I know that for someone with very little artistic talent, this is a new level of accessibility for someone like me to make some really cool stuff. With that said, those are my thoughts and my experiences with it, but I would love to know yours in the comments down below. If you have tried out Stable Diffusion already, what have you been up to with it? What have you, you know, created? Uh, feel free to jump in our Discord and share some of those images. I'd love to see them. Uh, also, if you haven't, is it something that you think you would try? Is it a bit too sort of complicated at the moment and you'd want to see sort of revisions and making it a little bit easier and less intensive? You know, cloud-based solutions instead? Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments down below and of course the mm, possible implications as well. If you want to check out anything that I've used, of course I'll link the CyberPower system in the description, the Automatic 11.11 repo and the uh, Dream Booth extension. I'll link all of that in the description for you to check out. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it really. If you want to support these videos and keep me making them, then feel free to of course hit the subscribe button and turn the bell notification icon. You can also support directly through YouTube or Patreon, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one. If you fancy testing some monitors, you can check out my open source response time tool at osrtt.com. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of other links in the description you can check out as well. Um, otherwise, that's kind of it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.